Hello everybody, this is Catholic Dad, episode number 158. Um, this is uh, Quo Primum. I want to talk about the encyclical Quo Primum by uh, St. Uh, Pius V in uh, 1570. This was, um, he, he wrote this, uh, I guess, in a response to the Council of Trent. What was going on at that point in time uh, in Europe was the Reformation, and uh, there was uh, all sorts of liturgical crisis going on in Europe, and uh, essentially Pius V came out wrote uh, Quo Primum and essentially abolished all liturgical practices in Europe, with the ex uh, save a few exceptions, not many. And, um, and what he did was he said, now, here and henceforth, this will be the, uh, the Latin Mass. And he, uh, uh, he had a whole bunch of experts write the, uh, the Tridentine Mass, which we still use in the world today. And um, I guess uh, this is the basis um, for uh, the divide between the um, the traditionalists and and the modernists, I guess, and not modernists, but uh, the Novus Ordo people in in uh, the Roman Catholic Church, and I kind of wanted to assess this myself. I was semi challenged on um, on my YouTube channel about um, uh, several important documents within the Roman Catholic Church, and I like that stuff. I think that's good. So I went out and did some reading, and here's my response to it. And I don't know if I'm right or wrong, and frankly. Uh, feel free to uh, challenge me on this one, and I'm not uh, pretending to be a, a liturgical lawyer at all, or a Vatican lawyer. I just uh, I read the documents, and I think I came to an assessment. So uh, I actually here uh, quote primum. This is the encyclical right here, um, and I'm going to read uh, two paragraph or one paragraph, and read something else in two paragraphs. Let's see. So I'll let uh, this is uh, this paragraph up here, right there. Uh, let all every everywhere and adopt and observe what has been handed down by the Holy Roman Catholic Church, the mother and teacher of uh, the other churches, and let Masses not be sung or read according to any other formula than that uh, of this Missal published by us. This ordinance applies henceforth, now and forever, throughout all the provinces of the Christian world, uh, to all patriarchs, Catholic churches, collegiate and parish churches, be these secular or religious, both men and of women, even of military orders, and of churches or chapels without a specific congregation in which conventional masses are sung aloud in choir and read private, uh, privately in accord with the rites and customs of the Roman Church. This missal is to be used by all churches, even uh, by those which in, the, uh, which in their authorization are made exempt, whether by apostolic indult, custom, or privilege, or even if by oath or official confirmation of the Holy See or have their rights and faculties guaranteed to them by any other manner whatsoever. So, essentially what uh, Pius V did was, <clears throat> he, um, uh, he essentially took all uh, liturgical practices within the Roman Catholic Church, and he said, you can't do them anymore. And, oh, by the way, we now have this liturgical practice of, of saying the Mass, and this is, will be now and forever, and everybody is bound by it. That's what he said uh, within, this, um, within this papal encyclical. And so, uh, and down here, by the way, in this, uh, we specifically, we specifically command each and every patriarch, administrator, and all other persons, or whatever ecclesiastical, uh, ecclesiastical dignity they may be, be they even cardinals of the Holy Roman Church, or possessed of any rank or preeminence, and we order them, in virtue of holy obedience, to chant and read the Mass according uh, to the right matter and norm uh, herewith laid down by us, and hereafter to discontinue and completely discard all other rubrics and rites of other missiles, however ancient, which they have customarily followed and must not be celebrating, um, uh, mass presumed to introduce any ceremonies or recite any prayers other than those contained in this missile. Now, what does that mean? That's really important, right? Like, uh, essentially, uh, you guys, uh, you, you've had some, what else was going on at that point in time? You, uh, the printing press was going on, and people were making all sorts of liturgical abuses, and the Protestants were manipulating things, and so they were essentially laying down the law. You guys aren't going to do this anymore. We're throwing out all, uh, essentially all other rubrics and missiles, and we're making one missile, and the Roman Catholic Church is going to be universal again, and uh, by a papal decree, that's the way it's going to be, now and forever. And, um, and that's what, uh, that's what uh, Pius V said. And so therefore, when um, the Mass came, uh, uh, not to be rewritten, I guess it was rewritten with the Novus Ordo. Uh, John XXIII did some tweaking to it, uh, Paul VI, and essentially brought the Mass to the vernacular. Uh, people who read this and uh, applied to the Quo Bonum, or the Quo Prim, uh, Primum uh, encyclical, they essentially said that uh, you can't do that because the Pope already said now and forever this is the way the Mass is and you can't have it any other way. And so I've been doing some reading about it. So there's, there's things that the, uh, the Pope can rule upon and the Pope uh, that they can't rule upon. The Pope uh, rules upon things uh, about Catholic and liturgical discipline. Essentially, how do you practice your Catholic faith? Discipline is something that's up to the Pope, and the Pope is actually like the supreme pontiff, like the, the ruler of the Roman Catholic Church. So he can essentially do whatever he wants. 
and uh, he can do whatever he wants until another pope comes along and says, no, it's not that way, it's another way. And uh, some examples of this would be fasting. You know, uh, back when, uh, you know, like 100 years ago, you were supposed to fast from midnight to the Eucharist the next day. And then some pope changed it to midnight, to, or uh, three hours before, some pope changed it to one hour before. And so things like fasting, prayer, how often you get to confession, how often you should go to Mass, how often you should accept the Eucharist, uh, these things are written up by popes and papal bulls, and these are things of Catholic discipline. And um, so let me ask you a question. Which pope is the supreme pope? Like, which one's the greatest pope? Is it Peter? Or is it like Francis? Is it Benedict? Is it uh, Leo XIII? Is it Pius V? Um, and the answer is none. The supreme pontiff is the pontiff of his time and of his day, and he can make whatever statement he wants about Catholic discipline, and people are, uh, by the virtue of obedience, um, told they have to accept it. That is until, of course, another pope comes along by papal decree and changes that. Now, the, the, the problem with this is that the, uh, you know, the traditionalist movements in the Catholic Church, the ones that essentially said that um, the Novus Ordo Mass is invalid, um, or is valid but illicit, is um, they treat it like church dogma. Now, uh, Catholic discipline is not church dogma. Popes can change uh, Catholic discipline um, whenever they write a, you know, a paper about it, or, you know, a papal bull. Uh, but they cannot change church dogma. And they're tre treating this papal bull like church dogma. And I think that's probably wrong. But again, I'm open, I'm open for conversation on this. And I think there's probably a lot more people uh, that can talk about it with me. Now, how do I know I'm probably right? And let me go back here. So what happened was, you know, um, you know, Vatican II came along. And Vatican II came along and they said, um, uh, yeah, you know, they made the church in the, or the mass in the vernacular, and everybody was kind of annoyed about it. Not everybody. A lot of people were annoyed about it, particularly the traditionalists, and uh, they kind of clung to their Latin mass. Well, what did the, what did the church unrightly do because of this, um, um, this encyclical? What they do, did was they persecuted people saying the mass of Pius V. And that, uh, that I think, was unjust, uh, rightly so, that for people to come out and say that was completely wrong. So somebody named Benedict XVI came along and essentially corrected that action where you weren't allowed to persecute the church, uh, persecute uh, the uh, Latin Mass anymore, and it needed to be liberated and used like Pius V wanted it to be used. And so how do I know I'm right on this? And so uh, let me see. This is what uh, this, uh, his motu proprio says. Eminent among the popes who showed such proper concern was St. Gregory the Great, who sought on hand, um, uh, on hand, or I'm sorry, I'm trying to read with the camera, who sought to hand onto the new peoples of Europe both the Catholic faith and the treasures of worship and culture amassed by the Romans in preceding centuries. Centuries. He ordered that the form of the sacred liturgy, both of the sacrifice of the Mass and divine office, as celebrated in Rome, should be defined and preserved. He greatly encouraged those monks and nuns who follow the rule of St. Benedict everywhere, proclaim the gospel, illustrated by their lives, the salutary provision of the rule that nothing is to be preferred to the work of God. It is uh, in this way the sacred liturgy celebrating, uh, according to the Roman usage, enriched uh, the faith and piety as well as the culture of numerous people. It is, uh, it is well known that in every century the Christian over the church's Latin lit liturgy in its various forms has inspired countless saints in their spiritual life, uh, confirmed many peoples in the uh, virtue of religion and enriched with their, de uh, their devotion, right? So that's what the liturgy is for. And then he says, in the course of centuries, Mary, uh, many other Roman pontiffs took particular care with the sacred liturgy uh, should accomplish this task more efficiently. Outstanding among them was St. Pius V. This is the one that the traditionalists like, right? Who wrote, quo primum, who in response to the desire expressed by the Council of Trent, renewed with great pastoral zeal the, church, uh, zeal the church's entire worship, saw the publication of liturgical books, corrected and restored in accordance with the norms of the fathers, provided them for the use of the Latin um, church. And it says, among uh, the liturgical books of the Roman Rite, a particular place belongs to the Roman Missal, which developed in the city of Rome and over the centuries gradually took on forms very similar to the form uh, which it had in more recent generations. It was towards this same goal that succeeding Roman pontiffs directed their energies during the subsequent centuries in order to ensure that the rites and liturgical books were brought up to date and, when necessary, clarified. From the beginning of the century, they undertook a more general reform. Such was the case with our predecessors, uh, Clement VIII, Urban VIII, uh, St. Pius X, Benedict XV, Pius XII, and Blessed John XXIII. And then he goes on to the um, Second Vatican Council. So essentially what he was saying uh, in this, and he was a, this is a clarifying position, by the way, 
that uh, you know the mass needs to be brought up to time. That's or brought up to uh, the current times. That's exactly what Saint Pius V did because he had the uh, the papal uh, decree to do so. And oh, by the way, since that point in time, a whole bunch of other popes have done so. Uh, when necessary, have clarified positions and undertook a more general reform, meaning that the, the popes uh, did exactly what Pius V did. Now, that's a matter of ca um, Catholic discipline or liturgical discipline. They are allowed to do that. It's exactly the job of the pope. Now, could Pope Pius V say, um, I am the Supreme Pontiff and I'm going to make um, decisions like this and no other pope will ever rule, rule upon me about uh, uh, issues of Catholic discipline? No, he's not allowed to do that. And <clears throat> By the way, he kind of admits it in uh, quo pronum. So what did we do? We specifically command each and every patriarch, administrator, and all their persons or whatsoever ecclesiastical dignity uh, they may be, uh, be they cardinals um, of the Holy Roman Catholic Church or possessed by any other rank or preeminence. We order them. And like that you have to do as we say. Do you, do you realize he, he said or preeminence? He didn't say eminence. He didn't say Holy See. He essentially listed all the people that are uh, loyal to the Roman Catholic Church. They listed everybody with the exception of the Supreme Pontiff, meaning that everybody has to follow this, um, you know, this uh, papal bull um, for all eternity, and he doesn't list the Supreme Pontiff. Why? Because he admits the Supreme Pontiff can come along and change Catholic uh, discipline. That's exactly what that line says. When he, he doesn't put in the eminence, he puts in preeminence. Anybody below the Pope. Um, this is my guess at it. I'd like to see what the, uh, um, you know, what the uh, traditionalists say about it. But here you go, right? Um, so uh, the Supreme Pontiff has control over the whole, uh, the whole Roman Catholic Church. Now, uh, who is Benedict? He was the uh, he was the the essentially the head of the doctrine of faith under Vatican II, right? And then he became pope, and he issued this statement, what I just read to you, meaning, the 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 head of the doctrine of faith in the Vatican said it was okay, it was allowed to do, and he became pope, and also said that John Paul II also affirmed it. So, if the head of the doctrine of faith in the Roman Catholic Church and the popes of the uh, uh, 20th century had um, uh, authority over Catholic discipline as they were supreme pontiffs, then Pius V could not have declared that the only mass for the history of the world. Could not have done that. Um, because if he, they were to do that, there's probably a whole bunch of other uh, declarations from popes throughout the history uh, that uh, they are in violation of, uh, the, the, uh, uh, that uh, the traditionalists are in violation of as well. And I haven't looked into that, and I, I probably should look into that. But who are you going to believe? Uh, the head of the, uh, uh, the doctrine of faith and the supreme pontiff? Or are you going to believe, and he wrote this as the supreme pontiff, by the way, or are you going to believe the traditionalists that say Pius V was right and we're ruling on that? Because if you rule on that, then you made yourself pope, and oh, by the way, and then, then watch this. They claimed that the Novus Ordo is not, um, it's valid but not listed. Well, if they're claiming that, then the Novus Ordo is a schismatic movement. Well, then who is the Pope over the Notus or or Ordo Mass? Uh, people are claiming that the Pope is the schismatic. Well, you can't do that because he's the head of the Roman Catholic Church. Um, and so, therefore, if you claim that he's schismatic, he's the only one that can uh, proclaim schism. And so, if he's the only one that can proclaim schism, how are you doing what you're claiming to do, saying that he's not able to do that? And so... There you go, um, and I guess in summary, I think, uh, boy, I love these conversations, and uh, I made, this was kind of put together not quite well, but uh, I've been doing some reading about it. I don't have a lot of time to think about it, but uh, in summary, uh, in quo primum, Pius V essentially cleaned up the liturgical practices during the Counter-Reformation after the Council of Trent. The uh, traditionalists took that as a Catholic doctrine position, and it's not. It's a Catholic discipline position. Catholic discipline falls under the uh, the authority of the Roman Catholic, which can or the the Supreme Pontiff, uh, which can overthrow any other Supreme Pontiff on issues of Catholic discipline, but not dogmatic positions. So I think the problem with uh, the the traditionalist position on this is they're tre they're uh, treating uh, quo, uh, primum as a dogmatic position of the church, which it is not. And I guess that's in summary. Boy, um, I, I got a lot out of this. Hopefully you did too. And, uh, please feel free to, uh, respond. I'm curious what you think. And, oh, by the way, again, this is all charity people. I, um, I love being challenged and I, uh, love looking into my faith and I love reading about history because when you're challenged, that's how you get better with your faith. And so this is Catholic Dad. God bless you. Pray the daily rosary and uh, live a sacramental life.